Now let's start at the beginning. This is a film that was named The French Gentleman Without Pants at the Sandford Beach. It is the oldest surviving Dutch film. However, the first Dutch film that was ever made was a slapstick comedy called Gestorde Hengelaar, and that was brought out in 1896. The Dutch film industry has obviously changed a lot over the years, and the more that I researched this video, the more movies and films and avenues I found that I really wanted to watch and do more research. And I know that the Dutch film industry isn't as big as your French and German neighbors. You guys take in about 7.1 million in box office sales a year. And sadly, there isn't a huge international market for Dutch films. With only 27 million speakers of the Dutch language as a first or second language, the demand for this isn't really big. Now, what I find interesting was when I was reading back through the comments on one of my older videos, I had mentioned in that video that the Dutch people like to speak English. And loads of you pointed out that this kind of stemmed from the Dutch having a generally good handle on English and wanting to make me feel comfortable. But the reason why they have a really good handle on English language is because the media that you guys consume from a young age is always produced in English, with usually the Dutch subtitles put over the top, which is the perfect combination for learning a language. And unlike the bigger budgets that France or Germany have, where they're able to actually dub these films into their own language. Aside from the small film industry, the Netherlands has produced some pretty well-known actors, actresses, directors, and film industry workers. Take, for example, Caris van Houten. She plays in a lot, a lot of Dutch films, but she also made it into the cast of Game of Thrones, which was a global success. Michiel Huizen also played alongside star Blake Lively in the film Age of Adeline. Famous directors that have gone on to win Academy Awards, like the Dutch Palestinian Israeli director Abu Assad. Paul Verhoeven is another really well known Dutch director, and he was responsible for bringing out Svartburg, Spetters, Dirksfreud, a range of Dutch films, but also worked in Hollywood for a really long time producing 80s and 90s sci fi hits like Robocop and Starship Troopers. Let's not forget about Rutger Hauer, who played in the original Blade Runner, and the film The Trailing that was nominated for an Oscar. I find it super entertaining that the Dutch film industry kind of has this small pool of actors and actresses that they get to choose from, and you will see these actors and actresses used over and over again in differing roles, but all together in differing movies. They all play characters that you would not expect from them, which is super, super entertaining to see. You always recognize the face or recognize the name or can recall other roles that they've played in the past. There are some older Dutch films that have sort of managed to gain a cult status. Films like Turks Freyd, which was brought out in the 70s, I believe in 1973, which was, like I mentioned before, directed by Paul van Hoeven. It was super confronting for its time having all of that nudity and such a weird storyline going through it that, yeah, it was one of those really shocking films that was brought out during the 70s. I always find it interesting to watch these older Dutch films and pick up on how much the language has changed between then and now. I remember the first time I saw Turks Fred, I did not understand half of the film because the words and the way that they use the language had differed so much in how I've used it. Borchmann, directed by Alex von Barmedom, he usually directs quite art housey films and has played a role in every single film he's directed but one. His style is quite signature and you can tell that you're watching one of his movies from these loose sort of characters that, that come in sideways and these far out storylines. So he again has kind of created a bit of a following around that signature style that he has. While I was researching this film, I came across a massive amount of information and unsuspecting 
films and videos and thinking, oh, I had no idea that that actress was Dutch or that actor was Dutch or that director. And how many of these people start out in such a small industry and have really managed to make it on the big screen, so to say. I've got a massive list of films that I now want to see after researching this and heaps of information that I found out. And I never realized how diverse the Dutch film industry really was and how I've only managed to see such a small portion of it. Now, before we move on to some of my favorite movies that I wanna share with you guys, I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare not only support this channel, but have made it possible for me to watch even more videos about how to make videos. So I can then go on and produce my own videos. Anyway, Skillshare is an online community for learners, beginners, dabblers, experts. They don't have ads. So once you jump on the platform, you can just watch uninterrupted content on the topics that you're interested in. They constantly update their platform with new classes. They hold live classes. And when you know it's only $10 a month, it kind of feels like a bargain, but that might just be the Dutch coming out in me. One class I've been loving this month is from the documentary and filmmaker, Dan Dan Liao. She runs a class about creating a modern cinematic documentary film with soul. And I've been thinking about diving a little bit deeper into some of these Dutch topics and experimenting with some editing ideas. And I thought that this class would be a really good place to start. I've loved this cast because it's broken down into so many bite-sized chunks that I feel like I'm not being overwhelmed by information. Each step follows on from the next one and it makes it a super simple class to follow along to. The first 1,000 of my subscribers can get a free premium trial if you click on the link in the description so you guys can start watching classes and executing those projects you've always wanted to. Okay, so let's get into the Dutch movies that I have been loving recently. I've talked about this movie before in some of my older videos, but the marathon is incredibly well done. It's funny, it's heartbreaking, it's super Dutch, and it was one of the first times I really felt myself enjoying Dutch cinema. I think it might have had more to do with my language level at the time and being able to pick up on the subtleties and the jokes and getting more of a laugh out of a Dutch comedy for the first time. This is an absolute must watch and I highly, highly recommend it. Gapsalon Romy is the next video on my list. Now, disclaimer, I was pregnant when I saw the trailer for this at the cinema and I'm not gonna lie, I cried in the trailer. So that was a sign for me that I definitely needed to go out and see this film. It's a super heartwarming and sweet story about a young girl and getting to know her grandmother. I feel like it's one of those stories that really humbles you, makes you appreciate the small things in life and makes you kind of ask yourself some of those big questions. Now, my next movie that I really enjoyed was My Bejondere Weg Met Tess. Now, this was the film where we were actually going to see when I cried in the trailer to the previous movie. But this was a really good movie. It is focused around these two young kids that are both fantastic actors and the friendship that they manage to build with each other in a short period of time and how they get up to all these adventures and kind of pull everyone into their story. I haven't been to any of the islands north of the Netherlands yet and being able to see the scenery and it just felt super Dutch, I guess, to me. It was a really well shot and well produced film. So I definitely recommend going and seeing that one as well. One of the earlier movies I remember watching was Loft. Now this one's actually Belgian. So they speak Flemish in the film. And I remember watching this film and really being able to pick up on the differences between Dutch and Flemish and not just the obvious things like the accent, but the way that they were actually using words. So I think I, I found this film really interesting in the beginning because of the language aspect. It was a really well done mystery and it's one of those stories that really does keep you guessing right until the end. There was an English remake of this film in 2014, but I definitely recommend going back and seeing the original Belgian film. Okay, so this last one is not entirely in Dutch, but this one is about a Dutch cinematographer. It's a documentary called Living the Light. 
and it was about his life's work and he regularly shot his own footage constantly throughout his life so the documentary was actually put together using a lot of his original footage and it sort of told the story of his progression in the industry and his genius mind and how he took real life things that he saw and incorporated them into the movies that he worked on like Paris, Texas. He was incredibly influential in the industry and watching this documentary was really the first time that I realised there was more to the Dutch film industry than I initially thought. So this documentary is a must for film buffs. I hope you guys enjoy my list. Uh, maybe you've seen some of these movies, maybe you haven't. Maybe you have recommendations for me. I am literally always on the hunt for new videos, new TV series, new things that I can get my hands on. I love learning and using movies as a learning tool. So shoot them my way, leave them in the comments below your favorite movies, or if you disagree with any of the movies I've recommended, let me know too. Sometimes some people are just gonna think that these movies were crap. So. Let me know in the comments below. I can't wait to read what you guys have to say. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you like watching videos about Dutch culture and Dutch language and all of those things, then remember to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.